The Oscar goes to Eddie Redmayne! During the past six Oscars, there is one obvious trend in the films that have won Best Actor. In five out of the last six years, the Oscar was given to an actor who was portraying a real person. Furthermore, more than half of the nominations were for performances based on real people. Similarly, in the Best Actress category, almost half of the winners in the last 15 years won for playing real people. In fact, 10 of Meryl Streep's nominations have been for roles based on real life, and that's not even counting Miranda Priestly. Trends like this are why biopics, or films about the life of a real person, are often called Oscar bait. Of course, not every biopic is an Oscar contender. Everything is a pressing issue. But it's no secret that in the past 30 years, biographical films have dominated the Oscars, especially the acting awards. Despite their award show success, biopics have a reputation for being predictable, overdramatic, and unimaginative, says NPR's Bob Mandela. You know every beat of a biopic before you go in. Humble beginnings, hint of greatness, triumph, setback, heartbreak, uplift. There is a formula to these things. Cue inspiring music. And this isn't a new opinion. According to biopic scholar Dennis Bingham, in the 1940s and 1950s, even Hollywood insiders considered biographies formulaic run-of-the-mill fare. So then why do Oscar voters continue to give biopics so much attention? even though audiences have been sick of the genre for almost a century, and many biopics underperform at the box office. I make garbage! Hey. One reason might be that when actors play real people, there are usually archival images and footage that viewers can compare with the actor's portrayal. If you're an Oscar voter and you see how similar Helen Mirren looks to Queen Elizabeth, or how perfectly Philip Seymour Hoffman captures Truman Capote's speech pattern, then you will likely be impressed by their performance. Since giving awards based on acting can be so subjective, it makes it a bit more concrete to be able to compare an actor with the real life person they are portraying. Oscar voters especially love when an actor severely alters their physical appearance for a role. Here are some quotes from anonymous interviews with actual Oscar voters. I hate when people use words like transformative, but what they did to make Gary Oldman look like Churchill and what he did in that role can only be described as that. He blew it out of the water. I always think, in terms of what was the most transformative, and it seemed to me that Eddie Redmayne was clearly that. I was really taken with Matthew McConaughey. He was just ridiculously good. Plus, the weight loss was just unbelievable. Additionally, biopics are often given more importance at the Oscars because they already carry the weight of being a significant and memorable moment in history. In 2012, Daniel Day-Lewis won an Oscar for playing Abraham Lincoln, one of the most heroic and larger-than-life figures in American history. Could the Academy really choose to recognize a troubled veteran or a man in a trash bag over Abraham Lincoln? Not even Jean Valjean could compete with him. Let me die. In this way, the Academy can highlight and reward important moments in history. So when biopics win Oscars, the Academy is choosing to praise the way the directors, writers, and actors have chosen to interpret a real-life event. Perhaps this is why Sean Penn won the Oscar for his portrayal of Harvey Milk, the first openly gay elected official in California. We've got to have equal rights for everyone. Some might argue that the award is meant to honor the real-life work of Harvey Milk as much as Sean Penn's performance. Richard Attenborough certainly felt this way when Gandhi won Best Picture. Members of the Academy, I'm sure that the person whom you really honor was Mahatma Gandhi himself. After so many years of biopics award show dominance, it's tempting to dismiss the entire genre as sentimental Oscar bait. However, that would be unfair to the biopics that have found compelling ways to blur the line between reality and fiction. I, Tanya provides a clever twist on the genre, using a mockumentary framing device to tell the well-known story from multiple contradicting perspectives. I never did this. The audience is left not knowing who they should believe and wondering if they should have more empathy for the disgraced figure skater. To me, films like this are proof that it is possible to create biographical films that are fresh, engrossing, and surprising. However, it's frustrating when conventional and predictable biopics get nominated, while truly original work is snubbed. There are many non-biopic performances I feel were unjustly overlooked by the Academy, 
especially because it's not any easier to play a fictional character than one based on a real person. This year, four out of the five Best Actor nominations are for portrayals of real people. So if biopics aren't going anywhere, hopefully award show voters will try harder to celebrate the invent of biopics, dismiss the formulaic ones, and ensure that fictional films aren't perceived as less meaningful. Thank you.